Pas de sans que the ED for punishing so many people, waking people up at the, at 3 a.m. I think that so many people are going to be very happy <laughs> that you are born. <laughs> people will sleep. I'm a very good uh, timekeeper, but I don't think I can reach that level of being in office at six. I know when I was a head teacher, I would be in office at five a.m. Because I had to go to every dormitory to wake up students, to do cleaning. But uh, after I retired in 2009, I think age got up with me, and uh, now, when I came and became to the minister in 2016, I would be in the office at 7. I would be in the office at 8. But now I don't know what is happening. <laughs> because now I'm in office at 9. <laughs> and I think uh, I need to call it quits. Really, when you start coming to office at 9, at 10, the body is, uh, is rebelling to come early. I think it is time for you to say, uh-uh, let's not disturb this country. Please, let, let's go. I'm not saying that uh, I'm letting go. <laughs> but I'm seriously considering. <laughs> I want to, to say how grateful I am to have all these very, very important people here. In fact, uh, it is a clear testament that Okello had very many good friends. I'm very really impressed, because I know that even when I are saying farewell for me, I don't think I will get, I will gather this. Uh... <laughs> First of all, the Chief Justice will not be there. <laughs> Uh, Honorable Cooper might be there because we are neighbors and I married from this area. But I don't think I can have all these people. So this is really a great achievement. People have recognized you are what you have done. And uh, I'm very proud. I'm very proud that so many people have come to attend your farewell. It is an honor to be here today, bidding farewell to Mr. Tom Obomo Kelo. After successfully completing his six-year tenure as executive director of National Forest Authority. In 2018, when I appointed him, you know, with my friend Mugisa, we used to have a lot of problems in NFA. And of course, we still have a lot of problems. So I, I, I think he quoted me correctly when I said, I don't know this man. And I know I'm very rough, by the way. I don't know whether I even put you off. But I normally, for the first time you may see me, you may think this man is very cool. But after a bit of time, you will know that he's one of the best people. So I normally harass people when I first meet them. So I told him, okay, like, eh, this one doesn't even look serious. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, really, I must say, he has done his best. And I want to say that I have been very lucky as a minister. I don't know why. I have not had any problem. Everything has been plain sailing with all my people I've worked with. I have not had any problem at all. But I don't know whether it is the age. <laughs> you know, sometimes when you are old, you look at things differently. Or my background as a teacher. 
because I was a teacher for over 35 years. And that must have played a part. But otherwise, all these people of mine, we have worked very, very well. And I'm one of the people who are most unassuming, by the way. I think I'm almost like him. Very few people know that I'm the minister. Because I don't like going around with flags. <laughs> so it is always good. To... I'm not humble. I am not humble. <laughs> but I'm a bit modest in, in what I do. So we are here to celebrate Tom's achievements in the forest sector in general. Today, I personally appreciate Tom for his unwavering commitment to improving forest reserves management, combating deforestation, expanding partnerships, and increasing forest cover. We have been told that forest cover has improved, and I think forest cover has improved mainly because of the activities of deforestation done by NFA and uh, our partners, the tree planters. They have done a tremendous job, and I really want to thank them. This pickup has improved mainly because of the tree planters. They have done a very good job, and uh, I want to thank you for that kind of spirit. I don't know whether tree planting is a, is, is a profitable job, but I know most people have gone for tree planting. When Tom assumed the helm of NFA six years ago, Uganda faced critical challenges in forest management, including illegal logging, rampant deforestation, inadequate funding, However, through his visionary leadership and the strategic initiatives, Tom has stand tight, making NFA a model of environmental stewardship and a sustainable forest management. One of, Tom's, one of Tom's most notable accomplishments is the successful implementation of the Forest Restoration Program. Under his leadership, NFA launched extensive reforestation activities, planting over 50 million trees across the country. These efforts have restored the degraded landscapes, enhanced biodiversity, and mitigated the effects of climate change. NFA job is one of the most difficult jobs in this country. NFA and NEMA. Those two jobs. Those two jobs. <laughs> Sometimes I used to say, I wish that taken away NEMA and uh, NFA for my ministry. <laughs> then I would have I would have a lot of peace. Those two jobs. <laughs> <laughs> now recently you had what uh, Nema did. They went to the beach and uh, evicted people. Now, every time I'm in, I'm in the cabinet, I'm bashed. They say your Nema is sleeping on the job. Your Nema is sleeping on the job. Mm -hmm. Now, when we, Nema wakes up from the sleep, <laughs> they say you should continue sleeping. <laughs> Not really. The man woke up, said, nah, uh -uh. I've slept enough. Now, people, Ugandans are saying, no, you should continue sleeping. <laughs> now, where is the truth? Huh? Where is the truth? When I woke up there, is the one saying, continue sleeping. <laughs> Is that the Honorable Cooper on the Kosasi? They say continue sleeping. Yet we had told the Nema to, to wake up. So Nema 
I think uh, the president told you to, to continue waking up. Uh, but obviously, it is very painful by way to evict a person. It, it is a very painful. It is very painful to evict a, a family to bring down a building. It is very painful. But somebody must make the hard decisions. Somebody must make the high, the difficult decisions. The problem with this country, nobody wants to make the, the difficult decisions. So I have another one now, a very short man in Nema, who is making the difficult decisions. <laughs> because we are supposed to be awake. So, the Ugandans, please forgive us. We have a human heart. We are not. We 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 we, we are not. Uh, we, we don't have. Uh, I don't know how you call it. Our hearts are not hard. We have a soft spot for our people. Because the person you are evicting may be your grandmother, may be your mother, may be your father. But the message must be sent to Ugandans that doing things with impunity must stop. <laughs> and the things they can do anything and they get away with. They can do anything, they can matter, they can do what and they get away with it. They can drive on the road the way they want and they get away with it. Because they think money can do everything. So a message must be sent to Ugandans that enough is enough doing things. When you do anything, there is a consequence, there are consequences for any action you take. You must accept the consequences. Somebody must may take the serious, they, they, they make the hard decisions. And the NEMA has to make those hard decisions. NFA, we have a lot of our forests and encroachment. Everywhere, our forest, we, we are fighting wars in every forest in the country. Now, unless you are ready, to take the difficult decisions, then the job, that job of NFA, you, you should just give it up. Because you are not supposed to be there. So we are ready to take the hard decisions. Nema, please continue if you think, if you know you are right. By the way, we have now gazetted gazetted all our all our wetlands all of them are gazetted we spent a lot of money gazetting we have gazetted all the wetlands in the country so know that when you encroach a wetland we already we have already gazetted them and then you will be breaking the law. <laughs> Let's respect our natural sources. Let's respect our forests. Respect our wetlands. Respect our lakes, our rivers. So, those of us in leadership, we need to, to take the hard decisions and I want to request members of parliament not to think of votes. Votes have killed this country, by the way. I say that without, without fear of contradiction. Where people do things because the voters 
Instead of us leading, we are supposed to lead the vote that are leading us. We are supposed to be a leader, to lead your people. Instead, your people are leading you. This is the biggest problem we have in this country. The people are leading you, the leaders. And that's the truth. And that is very unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. You are being led. I'm not saying you should not listen to the people. You should listen to them. But when, the, when, when, when you are being given advice that is not correct, show them the, the right path. Because you are elected to be a leader, to lead. I was a teacher for very many years, as a head teacher of a secondary school, for very many years. I have so many of my students, they know who I am. I lead. So we expect people who are in leadership, please lead. Don't go and tell people that it's correct to destroy our wetlands. A few people go to the wetland. The Lubiji, 300 people went there. But that wetland gives benefit to so many people in this country. The president has been telling you to be responsible for some of the rain. Uh, biodiversity, etc. Et Even that man, you know, when you, look, look, you read the papers, he has told you the benefits of a wetland. Now, 300 people decide that they are going to enjoy those benefits. <laughs> this is very, very unfair. 300 people decide that no, we are going to enjoy the benefits, we are going to deprive the rest of the country of these good benefits. I think we must say no. We say no. For the good of the rest of us, you get out. <laughs> Even the lakes. Some people think that they can put up very good houses. They take over a whole sh shores of the lake because he has got money. Never. Next, let's go for those. <laughs> and I wanted to go for the big fish. Don't go for the small ones. <laughs> Let's get one huge one. <laughs> and then they put down the whole building worth about six to a hundred billion. Down. Then you got us with it. Get the message. I've forgotten what I had written. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, Tom, thank you very much. Really, thank you very much for, for all the good you have done in the forest sector. I want to thank the board members for helping Tom, the staff, for... I was, I, 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 I was, uh, tears were rolling down my cheeks when I saw these people there saying this, 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 this. I said, ah, this man was loved. <laughs> I remember when I had retired in 2009, I thought I was a very good headmaster, by the way. <laughs> in 2009, I had performed wonders then I had a week later that some people were celebrating. <laughs> uh, Tom, I hope, I hope this is not fooling you. <laughs> I hope they are genuine. <laughs> but they appear genuine. They appear genuine. <laughs> Uh, Tom, thank you very much. Really, I've enjoyed working with you, just as I've enjoyed working with all my heads of agencies. 
Uh, Mr. Mukisa there, we, we worked very well. Uh, all of them, NEMA, NFA, Meteorology. Unfortunately, what is happening in this country is that some of the people, the brains, like in my ministry, I got some very experienced people, very experienced, but because of age limit. <laughs> I think we should remove the age limit. <laughs> because of the age limit, I have lost so many resourceful officers. We have so many highly experienced, highly trained. It is, it is really sad. Now we are losing Tom. He's a very bright man. Tom is a very bright man. Very, very bright. I'm very really lucky to have very bright people. I work with very bright people. I'm not very bright, but uh, <laughs> God gave me the opportunity to work with bright people. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know how to say fair when to Tom. I was asking him whether he's going to the village or he's going to be around. He says he's going to be around. We shall be talking. Uh, when I retire in 2036, please come and see me also. <laughs> I will invite you for my farewell. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I really want to thank all of you for coming to say farewell to Tom. I really want to thank you. And I'm very grateful to you, Fono Pono. I'm very grateful to you, sir, for coming. Continue defending us, even when we are wrong. <laughs> so let me not waste more time. I want to thank you, and I want to say some goodbye. Where are the children? They are there. Thank you very much for giving us a very bright father. Your father has done wonders and I look after him. Anyway, he's still young. You are 50, what? 59. I beat you by how many? Almost 20 years. I'm 75 now. That's what I'm saying. Enough is enough. I don't want to make mistakes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Let's appreciate the Honorable Minister. Big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister.